Hi, this is Daniel Scribner here with a quick preview of our next 20-minute playbook episode, which comes out tomorrow. In it, I'm joined by Malin Mahir, co-founder and CEO of Yield Street. Malin's background is fascinating. Before founding Yield Street in 2014, Malin founded and scaled several other companies, including Yodel, which he scaled to over $220 million in annual revenue before it got acquired by Web.com. Over the last eight years, Yield Street has built one of the world's largest private investment platforms. To date, they've brought on over 377,000 members that have invested more than $1.5 billion on the platform. And Yield Street has paid out over $196 million in interest payments alone. In this episode, Malin shares why he's been fascinated with blockchain and the problems it can solve, including KYC for platforms like Yield Street. Why his superpower is adaptability and how that's helped him as a serial entrepreneur. Some of his favorite books, including Leadership and Self-Deception and The Richest Man in Babylon. Why he loves the phrase, be bright, be brief, be gone. And why, if he could go back in time, he'd tell his younger self to take even more risks. It's an incredible conversation you won't want to miss. Here's one of my favorite moments from it. Tune in tomorrow to listen to the full episode. If you had to distill down your philosophy of building a company into just a few words, what would that be? How about I start with letters? A, B, C, D. (laughs) Four letters. And we spoke about this earlier. Uh, So for me, A, B, C, D, what does that mean? A, always be well capitalized. B, build and hire talent. Without the team, there is nothing, right? You have to have the right people that believe in it. C, communicate the vision. So what's your true north? Why should people care about it? What is the impact you're going to have? Because that's what is going to rally the team. And last, D is delegation and decision making. All of us, you know, I think those are two such important skills, but all of us kind of sometimes flounder with them, right? Can we make quick decisions? Can we get delegate appropriately? And then I may throw in a bonus, which is E, can you do it with empathy? I think that's kind of important. And for me, it's, uh, you know, I'm very much like, you know, direct cut to the chase. I think sometimes that empathy is lost because we are moving so fast. We want to get stuff done faster. But how do you kind of bake that and be more conscious about how people are perceiving you and and like, you know, uh, while you may have the uh, thoughts in the right place, it's very important that the team, you know, kind of gets that. So I think for me, that's the ABCD of building a good company. Those are great. A, B, C, D, E. And, and I love E. I mean, my my experience with that is, I mean, most founders that I know are very direct and cut to the chase. I think the ones that get empathy right uh, are able to retain talent and kind of compound for much longer. And I think that that's an underrated fact of the power of empathy. <laughs> it's just, it keeps, you know, it keeps your team members there engaged, feeling like they're cared about while they're working on building this business. You know, and uh, Daniel, if I may actually uh, expand on that, that, that a little bit. Listen, I think... Uh, one of the things that happens is that a lot of times, you know, if you are a Microsoft or a Facebook or a Google, things are just happening for you because you're, you know, you kind of hit that product market fit and stride and you're becoming a leader. So you have a lot of cash to actually overcome a lot of flaws, whether it's in your founders, leadership team, in the company, inefficiency and all that, because the cash is always coming in. For a lot of us, our businesses have always challenges, right? Like, because we are not the the Google or the Microsoft, though we are great businesses. And so that's where empathy can be very valuable, right? Because we model ourselves into like, hey, you know, even like the Elon Musk example I gave earlier is like, okay, great, because he's, you know, building very successful company in a completely different trajectory. You know, if I send that email, I don't know whether my company would like really embrace that, you know, meaning like, just because it's a different company, different ecosystem. And so I think the founders have to like be mindful of that um, to kind of understand what, what are the strengths that you have as a founder and a company that you're leading and it will not fit always uh, other circumstances. <laughs>